Isn't it a wonderful thing to be a part of the great Eastern Meadows Church of Christ? Yes. Amen. This is a good church. This is a loving church. This is a church in harmony with God's will. And you're to be commended for all the good things that we do. We all need to be involved. We have a theme this year, 2018, Yes, He Did. And it is graphically illustrated in this scene uh, that depicts the crucifixion of our Savior. And the key verse that relates to this is Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. But God commendeth his own love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What did God do? He commendeth his love toward us. It's translated, uh, God proves his love, demonstrates his love, or shows his love. It's a re commendeth is really a more involved word even than those words uh, give it, but it's God putting forth, introducing, if you will, setting a, a beside our needs his love and mercy. And that's what God has done. God commendeth his love, he shows his love to us in that or by the fact while we were yet sinners still sinners Christ died for us this was a vicarious death he did it in our behalf he did it for us that's what Jesus did so we know what God did he made a sacrifice of giving his son Jesus gave his life for you and for me he suffered the horrible death on the cross in this context of Romans 5, God's Word tells us we're justified by an obedient faith in and through the Lord Jesus. We gain access to the grace of God, ultimately demonstrating the love of God. Even though we were weak, verse 6, sinners, verse 8, enemies, verse 10, in spite of all that, Christ died for us. So what do we do? This is the key to the whole thing. This is that commitment. This is that involvement that we're talking about. As a Christian, how will I respond to God's love and the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus? The very next chapter, chapter 6, verse 12, suggests that we not let sin reign in our mortal bodies. That's why we're told to cleanse ourselves of all defilement of flesh and spirit. Then in the 22nd verse, he says you become servants of God. When you obey from the heart that form of teaching wherein you were delivered, you became his servants. And so we remove from our lives sin. We understand our requirement to be the servants of God. And because we are his servants, we're going to do whatever he asks or expects. The key, I think, to this doing what we must do is humility, true, genuine, heartfelt humility, plus a submission to God, and this will produce an obedient servant. Let me say that again. Humility plus submission equals an obedient servant. If we choose to be obedient, if we choose to respond in a positive way to what God did and what Jesus did, then we're going to humble ourselves, submit to him, and be the obedient servant he would have us to be. This involvement, this commitment's a very personal matter. I can't be involved for you, you can't be involved for me. All I can say is, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. I hope you'll take that same posture. And being committed is so much more than just filling out a, a form and handing it in, even though that's a good thing. Don't misunderstand me. It's so much more than coming together for worship and Bible study several times a week. Again, that's good, and that's what we should do, but that's just the start. That's just the beginning. It's so much more than being negatively good. As the uh, saying went some years ago, we don't cuss and we don't chew and we don't go where girls that do. Well, that's a, good po that's a good posture. That's negatively good. Now we have to add to 
not being bad, we've got to add to doing good. We are responsible to respond to God's love. This theme, yes he did, challenges us to focus on what God and the Lord Jesus has done for us and on what we will do for him. We'll all need to be fully involved. I have a confession. Every time I hear the phrase fully involved, I think of the firehouse sub going in and ordering a hook and ladder sandwich and getting it fully involved. You all know what that means? That means you get everything on it, and it's so much better. It's all right by its, without that, but boy, if you get it fully involved, it's just, it's scrump dilly is a good word. It's just wonderful. And I, so that tells you being fully involved is pretty big deal, pretty important. Or maybe a house engulfed in flames. Have you pictured or seen that maybe in a newscast sometime? That's what fully involved is. That's how they describe that. And every believer needs to be fully involved. We need to be on fire for the Lord. And not just today, but tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And renew this commitment every day that we live. Imagine just for a moment, this Close your eyes and, and imagine a scene where you're kneeling before the throne of God. You've been granted the permission to come into the presence of the almighty creator. And there you are, just you, before him. And you're recalling what God has done for you and your salvation, God's love, Jesus' sacrifice. What would you say? What would you do? What would you pledge to him? Lord, I'll do anything you ask of me. I'm your servant. Will you make that kind of commitment? Will you dedicate? You choose now. I, I, I have to choose. We all do. Do I, do I make just a half-hearted commitment or just do what, what I can get by with, the least I can get by with? Or... Will I make a commitment, a true commitment, and a positive response to the love of God, the sacrifice of our Savior, and make a commitment to be fully involved to the work of the Lord? The church will be, ref uh, the, the results, the, the success of the church as a whole will be reflected, uh, will reflect what we do individually. I didn't say that very good. Let me try again. What you do and what I do in the year 2018 is going to show forth the church. Either it's going to look like we're just going along playing at it, pretending, or it's going to say that's a group that's on fire for the Lord. They're involved in mission work. They're out teaching their neighbors about Jesus. They're doing good for all men, especially those of the household of faith. They're really, truly committed. I want to be a part of that. You want to get in on it? Make a commitment. Be a part of it. Get in there with us and fight, fight, fight. That sounds like I'm a cheerleader this morning, doesn't it? But that's, that's what we've got to do. Satan's the enemy. He's going to try to discourage you, keep you from doing anything. But we need to choose to decide that we're going to get committed, fully involved. I think of Charlie Tremendous Jones. If you've ever read any of his books, he was a very powerful speaker also. But heard him one time years ago, and uh, he was talking about commitment. And every time he said the word, he said, you've got to have commitment. And he grit his teeth and said it so fiercely, I thought, first time. And then he said, but if we're going to succeed in our lives, we've got to have commitment. I like that. I like the sound of that. I think that's what you need and what I need. We've got to have commitment. What will you do for the Lord? That's the real, yes, he did. He died for us. Now what will you do? That's what you've got to ask. Well, as elders, we pray every day that you will each one be found faithful, and that you will grow in the knowledge of our, our Father's will, that you'll walk worthy of the Lord, that you'll do that which is pleasing to God and glorifies his name. We plead with you. We beg that you will get committed. 
and you'll be here for every service of the church, and you'll be involved in every activity you can, and you'll find ways to serve that maybe hadn't even been thought of. You'll be giving your life to the Lord. He gave his life for you. What will you do?